Hey there, Jen of jensburger.com. I hope you're having an amazing day and it's going to be even better because we're going to talk about aromatase inhibitors. What the heck? I sound so smart saying aromatase inhibitors. And so what is an aromatase inhibitor? Well, it is an enzyme. Um, aromatase is an enzyme that is found um, in estrogen producing cells. And those cells are everywhere. I mean, we have them in our adrenals, our ovaries, our fat tissue, uh, placenta, the testes, everywhere these little aromatase um, enzymes are. And what they do is they convert estrogen, they convert testosterone and progesterone to estrogen. Now, that's a good thing under normal circumstances, but there are times in our lives, and there are some people, like myself, who convert a ton of those things into estrogen. So a lot of times when I look at my own labs or I look at labs of clients and I see some things that are happening like no progesterone, no testosterone, and high estrogen. Or maybe low cortisol, low progesterone, low DHEA, low testosterone, and high estrogen. Why? Well, lots of theories. But let's talk about how do we inhibit. What are the things we can do every day to help that process? You know, high estrogen causes PMS problems, fibroids, linked to breast cancer, other types of cancer because estrogen promotes growth and things in the body that are growing that are not supposed to be. It also promotes growing of our body in a way that we don't want it to, like fat. <laughs> estrogen is stored in the fat cells, especially in the abdomen. Um, the estrone is in there and it is really powerful and makes us fatter. So how do we balance this out? You know, what is the, the way we can help this and block that? You know, I've got other videos on detoxing. I've got videos on whatever, you know, this whole thing. But I want to talk about aromatase inhibiting in this video. So what is an aromatase inhibitor? It blocks that enzyme so testosterone and progesterone can't cascade over into estrogen abnormally, right? We want to have a normal function, not a crazy function. So one of the main foods that helps with this, first thing is diet, okay? So get out the toxins out of your house. Um, you know, don't be putting junk on your skin. Clean up your home. Those are all estrogen causing things. But to help your body detox through food, the first thing are your cruciferous vegetables. Anything containing sulfur. So your broccoli, your Brussels sprouts, your bok choy, your cabbage, anything of that nature in that family is going to promote um, estrogen detoxification because of what they call endo-3 carbonyl. It's a sulfur-based compound that helps the body get rid of the excess estrogen and it should be in your diet anyways good foods low calorie foods help with the sulfation process of detoxification in your body absolutely um, fantastic so onions are in this group as well you know they're 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 just these foods that are really um, important to have now other antiox high antioxidant foods are going to help this as well anything of super bright color anything that's bright um, red, anything that's purple, anything that's blue, anything that's... Now, I'm not talking about chemicals <laughs> that have been put in there to make them blue, to make them green, to make them yellow, to make them orange. I'm talking about natural pigments. Are Those antioxidants are going to help the body detoxify estrogen as well. And so anything of rich color, chlor high chlorophyll. I love um, chlorella. I, I love chlorella. I think who, who's... I like King Chlorella is the one that I really like. I forgot the name of the brand. Uh, forgot it. Anyways, you can message me and I'll get it to you. I just can't remember it. But chlorella is going to help. Anything that the body um, knows what to do with, uh, high pigment, high nutrient dense, is going to help with detoxification of estrogen levels. So let's get into um, some other specifics like um, nutrients. Okay. What nutrients help get rid of estrogen specifically? Well, before I get into that, there's one more thing. Exercise. You know, I personally don't think that weight loss happens from working out and burning the calories in the moment. I personally believe, and I've got degrees that say I can say this to a, some extent, is that the hormone changes that happen in the body that are so significant when you're physically active, especially doing weight-bearing exercise, your body converts, well, besides growth hormone and, you know, other things that happen that are really positive, 
um, the, there's different forms of estrogen garbage, estrogen metabolites. There's 16 alpha hydroxyestrone, there's 4 alpha hydroxyestrone, there's 16 alpha hydroxyestrone, and 2 alpha hydroxyestrone or 2OH is actually the, the happy, friendly form of estrogen going down the toilet and it could be circulating around your body. Now, that's the, they, they think this might be preventative to cancer or not. They're not sure. It doesn't have high estrogen activity. The, the 4 and the 16 OH do. So working out and your cruciferous vegetables all help convert those six, 4 and 16 alpha hydroxyestrone to 2 hydro, well, alpha hydroxyestrone. So you go from 4 and 16 to 2 OH, which is what you want, less estrogen effect. And one of the greatest things you can do with that is exercise, weight-bearing exercise. You don't need to go pump an iron and become a bodybuilder, but that type of resistance activity is going to help that, which is awesome. That's why I personally believe people that work out have that physique, even if they're um, holding some extra pounds, they look great because they're shifting that hormone um, metabolites within their system. And they're also improving other hormones outside of that, you know, for building the muscle, the testosterone and uh, growth hormone and things like that. They're getting better sleep. And there's a lot of things that go with it too, but this whole cascade of hormones is a result of um, working out. So there's that, but let's talk about nutrients. So <sighs> stick with me here. A vitamin E, very important to help keep estrogen behaving itself. Vitamin E, 400 units a day. Um, zinc is extremely important as well. Zinc, about 50 milligrams of zinc a day, is also um, very um, helpful. Some people will supplement DIM. You know, you can buy DIM, and DIM is a is isolated. Um, I forgot the breakdown of what the actual chemical name is. Let me see if I can find it here on the internet. Um, it doesn't say here. DIM is it's like diindol methyl something I you know whatever dim you can buy in a capsule actually let me look here on the internet what is dim let's see what it's called uh, it's gonna bug me here uh, la 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 so dim I don't know what ha di indole <laughs> di indole indole methane say that six times so we just call it dim you can find DIM anywhere. Um, some people really love DIM, and it helps get rid of the estrogen out of the body. I personally cannot take DIM. It, I think, takes the estrogen and shunts it the wrong way, even though it's supposed to shunt it to the right way, and I get cuckoo when I take DIM. So you have to tread lightly in the, in the DIM department. I do very well with calcium glucurate, calcium D-glucurate. Calcium D-glucurate helps the body get rid of those estrogen metabolites as well as other toxins out of your body. It's a great thing. I don't have a bad effect from calcium D-glucurate, and I've had that with my clients as well. So tread lightly with DIM. I love calcium D-glucurate. Big fan. Another thing, and the last thing I'm going to talk about is um, chrysin. Chrysin comes from passion flower. It's a, the passion flower, um, it's extracted from passion flower. It's not passion flower extract. It's an, an extract coming from passion flower. Chrysin has been known to be a very powerful um, uh, aromatase inhibitor. However, you cannot take it orally. You have to use it topically. And I think the, um, the dose is 60 milligrams at, per 50 milligrams of progesterone to block. Okay, and as men, men may need higher doses, like um, a couple hundred, I think it's 200, I don't, don't quote me, 200 milligrams uh, per, for a man. Women is 60, men is higher uh, of chrysin applied topically in the cream. So a lot of compounding pharmacies can have that. If you're a man and you have this question, just send me a message at jenspringer.com. I'll get you the right number. Uh, but for women, I know it's 60 per 50 milligrams of uh, uh progesterone. <laughs> so it keeps the progesterone from converting an estrogen. So that chrysin will block. It's a dermal absorption, goes into the system and blocks the estrogen uh, from converting the progesterone or the testosterone. It works very, very well, but it has to be the topical form. So you can purchase it from a couple different places over the counter. And if you're having your creams compounded, they can add chrysin to that cream. So you'll have to ask your prescribing professional to add chrysin in 60 milligrams per 50 milligrams of uh, progesterone and for the dudes 
I don't remember what it is. I think it's 200 milligrams of chrysin per 15 of progesterone. I don't know. Message me if you have that question. So anyway, so that will cover. Let's. We're talking about aromatase inhibitors. Let's block this. Biggest defense is to get not have the estrogenic things in your family, in your home, in your foods. Message me if you need help with what to get that is safe and easy to do. And then these nutrients will support and block that. And then get some exercise, okay, and eat um, those foods that are high in sulfur. Okay, aromatase inhibiting, signing off right now. Make sure you subscribe, share this with others. And until next time, this is Jen Springer. We'll see you then. And thank you for watching this video. Bye-bye.